All right, everybody, welcome once again to, you know, the pop culture show, the pop culture podcast of the ages. And that would be this show. And it's called the top five podcast. And every week, mostly I join my sister and sometimes we have other hosts that come play with us. And we talk about fabulous pop culture things that make us smile or that piss us off or that we want to share with the world. Sometimes it's music. Sometimes it's movies. Sometimes it's TV. But it's almost always me and Annie. So, hey, Annie Pruitt, how are you? Hey, Kristen Peak. I'm awesome. So this week we are continuing our professional series. And we have covered <laughs> a whole bunch. Yeah. We've done grifters slash con artists. We've done doctors and lawyers and teachers, and we have not done bakers or shoemakers, <laughs> but what are we doing today, Annie? This'll be fun. Today, we're going to do our top five movies about musicians. So, and I specifically, so fictional musicians. Fictional um, musicians. Went with that route, not. So yeah, the life or like what it, the life of a musician, if you will. Yes. Well, this should be fun. And I'm very curious to see if we have overlap. I had to dig around a bit for this because, you know, when I, when I was first thinking of it all, it all looked like some of the people we've talked about already in biopics, but it was fun to, to find some fictional musicians that made me smile. And most of these movies I've only seen once, but I'm okay with that. So you want to go first yeah. or do you want me to? Same, same. I'll go first this time. All righty. So my my number five is uh, a non-traditional musician, if you will. This one, I'm going to go with the percussionist, and that would be the movie Whiplash. Oh, so yeah. you've got Miles Teller as this aspiring jazz percussionist, and he's uh, under the tutelage, if you will, of J.K. Simmons, who is an absolute beast. And yes. it's just about how this, how the sacrifice that I'm going to call him a kid, but this, the sacrifice that this kid goes to at this conservatory in New York city, trying to please this man, he wants to just, you know, he's, he, but he's, he never will. So it's just this whole, this gamut of the abuse that he, that he goes through trying to be this young, this jazz drummer. So it's, it's, it's fantastic. But what I like about it is it, it shows like to be great, the, the number of hours it takes and with him, literally the blood, sweat and tears that goes yes. along with wanting to be great. And that's exactly what you watch unfold, you know, his drumming until his fingers bleed and sweating and sweating and crying and crying and having an absolute breakdown. Yeah, uh, so I I I love it, and it, it, I, I want to say there's a lot of movies that, that, that I, I want to say that's what made me fall in love with Miles Teller. That's one of <laughs> the movies. I think didn't J.K. He, he got a didn't he get the Academy Award for that? He did win the Oscar for that. Yeah, yeah, for for a best supporting, best supporting actor. So actor. yeah, it's it's amazing, and I just know that I don't ever want my son to be a jazz drummer. <laughs> He's a percussionist, <laughs> but he'll never be a jazz Simmons drummer. At least not with J.K. Simmons for us. <laughs> For an exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. Charles that's actually, that's a great choice. Charles worked on the set of that movie with our oh, neighbor. Wow. He lived in Pasadena. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Such, so cool. I do. I do love that movie. Okay. My number five is the character known as Bad Blake as portrayed by Jeff Bridges. And the movie is called Crazy Heart. So Jeff Bridges is kind of a, a worn down, has been country artist who, if memory serves, is also an alcoholic, but he's kind of working his way through the tail end of his career. And Maggie Gyllenhaal is this delightful reporter that kind of follows him around. And we get to hear Colin Farrell sing in this movie. And of course... <laughs> Jeff Bridges does his own singing and, and he's good. He's really good. And this was the, this role of all things was the role that finally got Jeff Bridges, his Academy Award. The music is fantastic. It it's, it's easy to watch because it's, 
It's uplifting. I love anything. I love Jeff Bridges and anything. He's one of my favorite actors <clears throat> and was definitely like one of those people that would have been on that Oscar episode that we had just done if, if uh, Crazy Heart hadn't come around. Mm -hmm. Really entertaining movie. The music's fantastic. So uh, yeah, good old Bad Blake from Crazy Heart. I I love the music in that. It is, the, yes, it was, it was a potential. Sings. Yeah, it's so good. Okay. I, 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 I'm, I had a feeling that this might be on your list, but I'm still going with it and I'm stealing it at number four. And that would be the one hit wonder of the wonders, that thing you do. Uh, what, so directed by Tom Hanks and Tom Hanks also in the film, but about these, you know, boys from Erie PA that have a band and the drummer breaks his, breaks his wrist. And so come along comes Tom Everett Scott. And they're, they're not a good band until Tom Everett Scott, who also, by the way, wants to be a jazz drummer, comes in and speeds up the song on stage and it becomes their their number one, you know, becomes a huge hit and, you know, reaches the billboard charts. So it's kind of the 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 rise and fall, you will, of a, of a one hit wonder band with ego and love and fighting and growing up because they're all just kids. They're young. Steve Zahn is adorable. And then you've got Ethan Embry, the one who, you, with the broken wrist, kind of, it, or follow and ends up, I'm sorry, not, he's not the one that broke his wrist. He's TV. He's the, he's the bass he's player. He's the bassist. And he joins the Marines and Steve Zahn gets married. And Jonathan Sketch is, a, is the lead singer who's an absolute jerk to his girlfriend, Liv Tyler, who ends up falling for Tom Everett Scott. It's just, it's adorable. And the song <laughs> is on my playlist. Yes. Maybe it's a, a little bit of a guilty pleasure. And even better because it was covered by, why am I having such a hard time with names right now? Lead singer of Green Day. Billy Joe. Yeah, I'm sorry. Billy, Billy Joe, Joe Armstrong. Uh, he did a cover of that thing you do with his with his No Fun Mondays during COVID. So oh, not only do I get fun. to listen to the music from the soundtrack of that thing you do, but also I get to reminisce with Billy Joe Armstrong. So there you go. That's my number four. Kind of, it's about musicians, the rise and fall, and the and the craziness that happens with you know instant fame and then absolute implosion. There you go. Totally. Well, okay. So we have overlap, but I will say that I didn't list the whole band. I just list, I listed shades. Tom mm. Scott is the drummer. And, and I think because there's a, the portion in the movie where he goes to the, he hangs around the recording studio and Dell comes in and they lay some tracks down together. And what do you call that tune, son? I am Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, you know, you're smiling from ear to ear. So I, I echo all of your sentiments about this movie. And it's, it's just so, so silly. I remember that Giovanni Ribisi was the original drummer and his name was Chad. And Chad is hopping the, the parking meters while they're walking through town. And then you hear Ethan Embry with, guys, Chad fell down. <laughs> <laughs> how can you not laugh at that it's so funny so silly yeah. and then I love the Tom Everett Scott and Liv Tyler get together at the end because he treats her like a queen and yeah I, I love everything about this movie and you know what is also funny about this you know comparing it because I've been watching I've been watching Elvis with your your boy Austin Butler in it I've probably watched <laughs> that movie three or four more times since it's been on on Netflix and yeah. I can't, I, I venture back to that thing you do because they're both movies featuring Tom Hanks. One movie with, in which Tom Hanks is, you know, mostly adorable, but you know, Hey, you signed a contract. So yeah. you've got to earn, you know, live up to your end of the deal. But then, you know, he's a manager in all of us too, but a really terrible, nasty, awful guy, which is always so hard for me to think of Tom Hanks being an awful guy. But, but nonetheless, I, I'm with yeah. you, you know, I, I love this movie and I love, I love the guys in the band, but I was just specifically going with, with shades favorite shades. So okay. yeah, I'll, 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 like I'll slot him in as my number four. Okay. Uh, sorry to make you go out of sequence on that one. No worries. Okay. My number three, you may, may you may think this is a little low. Um, and it's not so so much about the the life of a musician as it is just about um, musicians and and the chaos that ensues with life on the road in a way. 
but it's gonna, I'm going with the Blues Brothers. I I gotta I gotta do it. They got they're putting the band back together. So it's you know they get the band back together and start you know but getting getting their gigs and it's it's obviously one of our family favorites. I didn't know if it was on your list or not, but it's great music. So it's it's like it's almost like a non musical musical because it's the they they sing songs not in to portray a scene, but there's music in it. But yeah, that's I don't have a lot more to say because it's it's. If you haven't seen it by now, then you'll probably have no reason listening to the show. So there you go. Number three, the musicians, the brothers who put, who get the band back together and make beautiful, beautiful music. Yes. Jake and Elwood. And that Jake is, and Elwood. oh my God, that is like a seriously quotable movie too. There's all yeah. kinds of goodies in, in that. And, mm -hmm. and I, I think I want to say that the Blues Brothers originated as a skit on SNL, I think. And, and those, I think they have toured as Jake and Elwood, like a real tour outside of the movie thing. Yeah. And I think that was the main reason that I did not put the Blues Brothers on my list because I was thinking like, well, I mean, I know Jake and Elwood Blues are not real people, but, but I, I, yeah, I, I'm with you all the way with these guys. And they did, they filmed every minute of this movie is in something in Chicago, except for, mm -hmm. I think where they go in Wisconsin to have the big, the big show. And speaking, speaking of pop culture landmarks, like, oh yeah, the, 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 the bridge that they, that they send the Nazis off of is, you know, on Pulaski <laughs> road. And yeah, that's a pop culture landmark. Why would you show oh, boy, anybody yeah. that bridge, Chris? That's ridiculous. But they do. They they take a car completely down our old neighborhood in, in Park Ridge. And it, you know, that always gives me so much warmth to think like, you know, that's where I used to live. That's where I grew yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So much fun. Okay. Let's see. I am. Okay. So my number three, and we've talked about this movie before, but I'm going with Georgia Flood as played by Mayor Winningham in the movie Georgia, which also features Jennifer Jason Lee. So Georgia Flood is a very famous folk singer played by Mayor Winningham. And, and Mayor Winningham is on her own accord, a very talented singer and artist. She did record some CDs separate from what's in this movie and was nominated for Best Supporting Actress in this film, Jennifer Jason Lee is her sister, younger sister, who it struggles with drugs and is more of a punk rock singer, but kind of a super hot mess, absolutely worships her big sister. And, and so she's kind of a, kind of a tragic figure. The, the songs that, that she perform in the movie are songs that I enjoy, but I think the whole point is to understand like this person is damaged. But mm -hmm. just in terms of the the movie being just as much about Georgia Flood and her life as a popular folk musician, and she's yeah, I mean this, the music's wonderful, and and Mayor Winningham is is very good in this movie. So I'm going with my number three is Georgia Flood from Georgia. Okay. okay. All right. So my number two is another kind of non I went really non-traditional but I'm gonna go with Scott Pilgrim in the movie Scott Pilgrim versus the world a movie based on the comic but Scott plays bass in Sex the Bomb this indie garage band <laughs> but of course what's the the movie's not about musicians or music but Scott Pilgrim is a musician in this and you know obviously they want the band to do well and he has this little groupie but it's it's the comics are awesome but the the movie itself michael sarah is everything he's ever done i've loved but he plays the he plays the the sympathetic you know character so well and all he wants to do is is get the girl and he has to beat <laughs> all of her all of her exes throughout the <laughs> throughout the oh, film <laughs> So have you ever seen it? I've not. No, this is uh, a, a Michael okay. Sarah movie I have not seen. Okay. So yeah, that's that that's my number two. Scott Pilgrim is one of my favorite fictional musicians in a film. Oh, that is great. I love it. I do like Michael Sarah. I think he's I think he's hilarious. Okay. My number four is is a do a double duo, if you will. And I'm going with 
our two top performers in the movie Velvet Goldmine. So you've got Brian Slade as portrayed Ooh. by Jonathan Reese Myers, the ridiculously super sexy Jonathan Reese Myers. And then you have Ewan McGregor as the as the punk artist Kurt Wilde. So you're kind of channeling a David Bowie-esque character and an Iggy Pop-esque character. And this this movie, this is a, a Todd Haynes movie about a, a glam pop star who there's like a, a, a mystery, like Brian Slade just disappeared one time and what happened to him and Christian Bale, excuse me, Christian Bale is the reporter trying to do research and figure out what happened. And this movie's kind of whack all over the place. Ewan McGregor and Brian and uh, Jonathan Rhys Myers do their own singing. And you, there is a there is a soundtrack to be found for this. But yeah, I saw this in the theater a long time ago in the 90s in St. Louis. And I, I, I think I've only watched it again one more time. But when I think about, you know, truly fictional musicians and the way that this film has played out, it's it's really good. And and you get to see Ewan McGregor's penis. Not that that should be a reason to watch it, but nonetheless, I remember thinking like, whoa, hey, Ewan McGregor's full frontal. Oh my God, what just happened? Because I was not expecting that to happen. But yeah, this is this is a good one. And and I love all yeah, Todd Haynes is one of another one of my favorite indie directors. He's done some some really interesting things over the years. So that is my number two yes okay <laughs> okay so it's time for my honorable mention it is time all right i'm gonna go i had to go back and forth on this one okay i'm gonna go kind of silly with this one my honorable mention is actually gonna be bill and ted from <laughs> bill and ted's excellent adventure because it is their awesome. music that in fact saves the world they just have to graduate high school first it's 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 such a silly movie and I remember when it came out I made fun of it it's stupid and then I watched it again in my in my 30s and I and I laughed my ass off and then I watched it with my kids in the last sometime in the last two or three years and I fell in love with it all over again so you've got you know of course they they're they're visited from from the from the future they from George Carlin to you know they have to they have to learn they have to go I'm sorry they have to go back in time and, and gather up characters from history to pass their final history exam but right. it's 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 really ridiculous but you do have have Jane Wheedlin as Joan of Arc let me just put that out there yeah her first acting love role that. but they they themselves as characters are they're adorable they they just are some of the some of the best lines can't come from that movie and it was just it's fun to watch so both but these two musicians who are just ridiculous but they have good hearts so I, I love him. I'm stumbling all over myself right now, but it's okay. I'm, like, it's okay. I'm with you. It's Bill and Ted. There you go. San Dimas. Yes. Thank you, San Dimas. Yes. Every time I Wild drive, stallions. every time oh, I, I drive said. that way, I I am like <laughs> strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Yes. All right. I can always put them in the Iron Maiden. Excellent. <laughs> Execute them. Yes. Bogus. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's a ton of quotables in this and, and it's, you know, like it's kind of a Valentine to 80s Southern California, you know, stoner dudes. I don't know that they're truly stoners. I don't remember if they are, but they're, you know, not mm -hmm. all there. Mm -hmm. And yet they're so, they're so sweet and they're so cute. They're so sweet. They're adorable. They just are. I love me some Bill and Ted and who in who that's Gen X has not ever heard someone else say no way. Yes. Way. Ted. Way. Yeah. Way. Or 69 dude. Yes. <laughs> what number are we thinking of? 69 dude. Yeah. Okay. Oh Don't get me started. So funny. Okay. That was your honorable mention. Bill and Ted. Yes. From Bill and Ted's yes. excellent adventure. Yes. I'm going to go with, and again, this is a movie I've only seen one time, but it, it is probably one of the origi original-ish mockumentaries. And well, no, this is a Rob Reiner movie, but it features Christopher Guest. And I'm talking about Spinal Tap. Christopher Guest has, on his own has gone on to, to direct a number of different types of mockumentaries. But Spinal Tap is what brought us the whole, like, it goes to 11. <laughs> and then the oh, black 
all black. If it were any more black, it would be mourning. And I do not have the best British accent in the world, but this movie is hilarious. And, you know, the they've had 50 drummers because every drummer has died from some stupid thing. He just spontaneously combust on stage. Uh, craziness. Everybody in this movie is hilarious. So you've got... Lenny or Squiggy, I forget. Michael McKeon is the lead singer. Yeah, <laughs> from from Laverne and Shirley, and then you also have Harry Shearer and Christopher Guest and Michael, mm -hmm. and Michael McKeon. Yeah, so there's just three of them because their drummers keep dying. And yeah, this was, I want to say this is Rob Reiner's like directorial debut as well. But yeah, super super fun, super silly, and and I do think that Spinal Tap have had a you know a, a post movie career of their own touring and and being silly and whatnot but yeah it's it's a good one and it goes to 11 it goes to 11 very good I all right it. okay my number one is is not a not a great movie and it's a bit of a guilty pleasure for me but it and it's but it's one of my favorite uh clips to pull up on youtube and that would be the musician would be that one of Eugene Martone in the 1986 movie Crossroads. Good. So Ralph Macchio, this classical guitar player who's studying music at Juilliard, who's fascinated with the blues and inevitably ends up linking up with this Willie Brown. Mm -hmm. He's got to find some of this lost song. Well, Willie Brown, all he wants to do is get his soul back from the devil. And of course, you have Jamie Mer Jamie Gertz in there as a kind of the the girl that she's We're there. Gratuitous she's sex pot. Yes, <laughs> yes. But it's he's so obsessed with blues music, and he's just some some New York City kid, you know. And it ends up the 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 great scene is the cut and head scene with with Steve Vai. Oh hell um, yes, where. He's he's on the verge of losing, and 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 Willie Brown's gonna lose his lose his soul, and then and then Ralph Macchio pulls out good old Panini or Paganini and and starts playing classical music, and he beats him, and he wins, and he and Joe Morton as the as the as the assistant to Scratch, who's the devil, and it's just yes. uh, yeah. So it, again, it's not a great film, but the musician that in that scene is one of my all time guitar playing in the in the music or in the film so it's a great if so if you don't want to watch a movie just pull out cutting heads from crossroads it's so cool uh, yes there I, you go. this annie i love your choice here this is fantastic and i'm with you it, this is not a fantastic film you know karate kid goes to juilliard and and, and plays and plays guitar but i i love in the cut and heads duel that it 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 comes back to Eugene having to pull from what he what he knew best and and yeah. making that work for him and 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 then now you see Steve Vai like oh he's going to try the same thing but his heart wasn't there yeah you know, he was not pure in soul so of course he's not, <laughs> not going to win um, but uh, I I do I do love that scene. Uh, and I, yeah, I've known, been known to pull that up on, on YouTube myself. So good call, Annie. I love it. Thank you. Okay. okay so, so uh, oh, keep going. I'm recap. sorry. No, are you going to recap? Oh no, you're number one. What I have to give you number my number one? one. Yes. I'm, I'm going with, and again, so this is one of those movies. I feel like this particular actor tends to do these from time to time because they're fun for him to do and they're not great movies either but I I've never not enjoyed any of them but I'm gonna go with the role or the musician known as Chris Cole the movie is Rockstar and the actor is Mark Wahlberg so he plays a guy that started a cover band dedicated to their favorite band ever called Steel Dragon and the steel <laughs> dragon lead singer has to go on a hiatus or something crazy happens. And well, first of all, Chris Cole gets kicked out of his own band that he started over <laughs> egos and stuff. And then the real steel dragon band invite him to come take over as their lead singer. And so now his like his his dream in life is coming true. But, you know, stardom will change you. Jennifer Aniston is his 
his groupie girlfriend, but you know, there's difficulties throughout the rest of this relationship too. So it's, it yeah. answers the whole question of, and I'm going to pull this from Willy Wonka, like what happened to the guy that suddenly got everything he always wanted? Well, in Willy Wonka, he lived happily ever after, but in, in Rockstar, Chris Cole has, has some, some ebbs and, and flows throughout this, you know, becoming this this new front man for his favorite band ever. And there's, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's cute. And I mean, I think Mark Wahlberg basically took that same experience and I don't know which movie came out first, but when he plays the guy that w tries to walk on the Philadelphia Eagles, which I, and I love that movie too, but it's almost like the same like transference of this is, and, and he's so good at these characters and it, it might've been a cruddy, screenplay or not as good a screenplay and the movie would not have been nearly as entertaining if he hadn't been in it because Mark Wahlberg just brings this sense of in a lot of his stuff like when he's Dirk Diggler in Boogie Nights this innocence <laughs> and sort of this gullible nature of like you know I'm just here because I love this and I don't I don't care about anything else it's so it's humble and it's sweet and yeah so I just I just love everything about when he gets to play those people, as opposed to when he's playing, you know, total asshole <laughs> FBI guy or whatever in, in The Departed. <laughs> Which is a great movie. Which is a great movie. And he's excellent in it. Every minute of his Academy Award nominated performance, well-deserved. Okay, so that gets us through. And yes. since you started, I recap first. Okay. So my honorable mention is Spinal Tap from Spinal Tap. And then I've got Bad Blake in Crazy Heart. Shades from That Thing You Do. Georgia Flood in Georgia. The one-two punch of Brian Slade and Kurt Wilde in Velvet Goldmine. And then the very adorable, sexy, yet crazy-haired Chris Cole in Rockstar. Love it. My honorable mention are... Wild Stallions, Bill and Ted from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Miles Teller's character from Whiplash Number no. Five, the band The Wonders from That Thing You Do, and then the Blues Brothers, the Blues Brothers, Scott Pilgrim in Scott Pilgrim versus the World, and then Ralph Macchio's character from the movie Crossroads, 1986. There you go. Eugene Martone. And I remember, didn't the Wonders spell it? The word one ders one. they were being yes. interested. The one. Eaters. <laughs> one eaters. Yes. No. One. Wonders. 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 I love it. And maybe, maybe we'll make a playlist out of this one if I can find some stuff. Ooh. Again. That would be kind of fun. We have not done a, a true music episode in a while. So maybe I'll see if I can't pull a playlist out of this to share. We'll see what we can see. But yeah, so the professional series is is winding down, but we still have a few more to go, friends. So absolutely, be looking for that. Okay, for Annie Pruitt, I am Chris McPeak, and yeah, we'll catch up with you on the flip side. Okay. Whoop.